Hi folks, Thomas Sinson here with ThomasSinson.com and today is another episode of Big Data, Big Questions. And so today I'm going to continue talking more around deep learning because I think this is very important. It's one of the hottest subjects right now if you're a data scientist. And so I think that data engineers, machine learning engineers, and people in data science need to understand some of these basic concepts. We get through some of these basic concepts, then we can start programming using TensorFlow and PyTorch and some of the other uh, deep learning frameworks. So today I'm going to talk about supervised versus unsupervised training in deep learning and how that is, what you need to know, and kind of the understanding. So we're going to break it apart. We're going to, you know, get down to the base level of what's the difference between supervised and unsupervised and talk about some of the real world use cases. So this is going to be great information for you and I hope you'll tune in. So find out right after this. So welcome back. Before we jump in, let me say, if you have any questions, make sure you put them in the comment section here below. I'll try to answer them on here. If you have any, you know, have any thoughts like, hey, am I missing something about deep learning? Is there something more that you'd like to understand about it? Or, hey, are you tired of hearing about deep learning? Should I just go back and do the Hadoop stuff, right? So that'd be great, great comments, great, great feedback. Also, if you don't feel like put them in the comment section here below, you can go to thomasinson.com forward slash big questions. And that'll come to my email address and you can ask any questions you want and I'll, I'll try my best to answer them on here. I'll at least give you some feedback and send you an email directly to answer your questions. So without further ado, let's talk about supervised versus unsupervised training in deep learning and kind of why we need to understand that. So before we jump into that, let's talk a little bit about what deep learning is, right? So if you're familiar with machine learning, so if you think of machine learning, think of it as you know, it's the way that we're going to program and find out different diff different pieces whenever we're trying to do some analytics on, on, let's just say, an image, right? So if you have an image, let's say we were trying to detect the features of a cat um, for, from an image, what we would do is we'd go in and we'd program the different, different pieces and different weights. So, for example, some of the features might be the ears of the cat. Does the cat have fur? What about the whiskers or the beard? I guess cats don't have beards. But you see what I'm saying, right? Those are all the different features. So we're actually, as a, as a data scientist, we're going to go in and we're going to put weights and assign those weights to each one of those values. Versus deep learning. So in deep learning, we're still doing a cat image. So we're still using the features from a cat, although we're not defining those features. So we're allowing those features to be defined by the neural network and by, by the programming. So we'll talk a little bit more about neural networks in another video. But just understand, deep learning, we're allowing those weights to be assigned by the neural network, by our, you know, by our, by our deep learning training. So machine learning, deep learning, deep learning is what we're talking about here. So let's talk about supervised training in, from a deep learning perspective. So when we're talking about supervised training, we're thinking about training data. Let's keep with our image detector for our cat images. So we're thinking about having good images and that is, tr that is labeled, right? So we have these labeled images. So if we're training that neural network, what we're doing is we're saying, hey, got like a thousand images of a cat and maybe 10,000 images not of a cat. All these are labeled, right? You, you know, in the 10,000, you know, they, you know, the outcome says there is no cat in this uh, picture. In the thousand images of the cat, we know there is a cat in it. So as we're training it, those weights can be assigned, but we know the outcome. So if you think about it from a back propagation perspective, so this is where your neural network will go back in and decide, okay, did we make the right assumptions here? Did we maybe need to adjust these weights based on, did we predict that it would be a cat and it turned out not to be a cat or, you know, vice versa? So this is why there's a, there's kind of a feedback loop with supervised training, right? So because we know what the outcome we're looking for. So we're able to put those images in, we're able to train the models too. So same, same thing can work with text too, right? Like if you're if we're looking for you know to train train a model on housing prices we're able to predict okay did it did it meet this specified value of it so think of that as supervised learning now we'll say most of most of the workloads and most of the things that you're seeing in the in the world today around deep learning are going to be that supervised right so when you think about supervised learning and we're talking about these labeled and training data sets we're talking about a lot of work for the data scientist or the, the data analyst to be able to go back and making sure we, that we have curated data. So it's still time consuming. I've seen one stat out there that we'll talk about maybe some other time around 
80% of a data scientist works is nothing to do with data science. Well, not nothing to do with it, but it's not data science work, right? It's ETL, so, you know, mun you know munging data, and then also collecting, uh, collecting data samples and, you know, integrating like TensorFlow and PyTorch. But you can see where this task here of using supervised learning takes a lot of time because you've got to have those labeled data sets, right? So that begs the question, why wouldn't, why, you know, why, why don't we use maybe unsupervised learning, right? Hey, that's on our list to talk about today. So unsupervised learning is different, right? We don't have those labeled tr training data sets because with unsupervised learning, what we're doing is, hey, let's take 10,000 images and we're going to feed it through our neural network and we're going to allow for it to, you know, maybe pull out some features and, and decide, okay, you know, hey, this is, you know, this is kind of a clustering of these images. So it's going to pull bull like types by, back, but it's not specifically going to be able to train, at least in this point, hey, these, this is a cat, this is not a cat, you know? So that's something that we're still doing with supervised. Unsupervised learning is it's kind of like the where we want to be. So um, I was on a podcast, I don't know if you listen, make sure you check it out. I'm on a podcast called the Big Data Beard uh, Podcast. And so we talk about things around big data and you know have, have guests on. So one of the guests we had on a few months back was Wayne Thompson from, um, he's a chief data science officer at uh, SAS. And he, we were talking, I was talking to him, I said, hey, what's the next big thing when we talk about deep learning and, you know, what is the big wave of really, hey, now I'm going to get my cool robots and we're really getting into where the machines are training, you know, training themselves. Um, and he said that it was uh, unsupervised learning. So unsupervised learning is going to be the key. One, because then we can just take data, you know, we can take data that we don't really have labels to and allow for it to be trained and kind of kind of put some use to it. But then also, you know, it's going to it's, it's going to save us a lot of time there, but also it's going to give us the opportunity to really start being able to train models a little bit faster because because of the fact that we're not having to go out and we're not having to have these trained curated data sets we're actually maybe we could turn it on a video right and let 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 the machine kind of learn from that perspective he thinks that's you know that's the big thing and that's that's where we need to be which begs the question why isn't everybody just doing that right if it's <laughs> if unsupervised learning you know takes takes less data sets and takes less you know man hours and to to be able to take these data sets why aren't we doing it well, we're just not there yet. From a technology perspective, you know, there's not a lot of people doing this in production very well. And just we're just not there from a technology perspective. But he, so Wayne Thompson, uh, during the interview process, he said that he thought we were maybe three to five years out. So, you know, take that prediction from an industry expert that's been around to know that, hey, you know, we, we could be there at some point. So, but a lot of what you're going to be doing, a lot of, you know, a lot of the test sets and a lot of the tutorials that I'm doing on this uh, program and for Pluralsight are all around more supervised learning, right? And so where you see unsupervised learning and why I'm still talking about it is, like I said, it's really good about taking 10,000 images and grouping them and putting them into clusters. So it, what, it, what it can do is it can start to do maybe some clustering, right? It can help with that data curation for, hey, we're trying to get all these photos of a cat. Well, it can start bunching those, in, bunching those into it to save you time on the prospect of having to go through and find these data sets. So, so quickly, you know, supervised, we have label sets. Unsupervised training, we don't have label sets. Really good use for clustering. Something we'll see in the next three to five years. So that's all I have today for Big Data Big Questions. Make sure you subscribe so that you never miss an episode. And then also, let me know if you have any questions. And until next time, see you again.